we're back. It's the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video, the edition for the final day of February and the final day of meteorological winter. And what a winter it has been in 2022-2023. Just a reminder, in case uh, you haven't been watching these videos of late, we're going to do a full recap of the winter season, all the stats, and then look forward to spring and beyond. In probably Wednesday evening's Weather for Weather Geeks, we'll also put a blog post online. If you're a little bit more of a reader, you can check that out. Look for that probably on Wednesday evening after we get the final numbers for meteorological winter after midnight for tonight. Looking back at the last 31 days, not too many surprises here. And you know, we've had a couple of chilly days of late, but the calendar day high temperature has been deceptive a couple of times, including today. Our, our In the record books today, we'll go into those record books with a high of 50. It was never 50 this afternoon. We spent most of the afternoon in the 30s, but we register a plus nine on this final day of February. Only one day technically qualifying as below average since the fifth day of February. It has been a remarkable, remarkable run. So that high of 50 occurred just after midnight today. All these numbers are <clears throat> just after midnight with the clouds, stratocumulus clouds hanging tough today. We even had some drizzle here and there. It was just kind of a gloomy day. Better things are coming our way for tomorrow. Of course, one of the big stories this winter, and again, we'll talk about the final numbers tomorrow, the lack of snowfall in the winter as a whole, and of course in February. This will go into the record books as not only the second warmest February on record, but the second least snowy February on record with only 0.4 inches worth of snow at the airport. We had 0.2 on the second, 0.2 on Saturday the 25th. That is almost 15 inches behind the average. First place, uh, the Super El Nino February of 1998. We had just a trace worth of snow in February of 1998. All right, the sky is trying to clear this evening, and if the sky clears over your location in time before Jupiter and Venus set, this will be worth checking out. Of course, Jupiter and Venus have been prominent when we have a clear uh, western sky in the evenings of late, and the next two evenings will be really cool. The moon is not joining them, but they'll be really close together, especially tomorrow evening. So check that out, west-southwest sky, probably before about 9, 9.30, if you get a chance, if the clouds have cleared out in, in your location. I think we'll have maybe a better chance to check that, this pair tomorrow evening, which will be good because they'll be even closer together on Wednesday evening. Current uh, satellite picture, uh, about 7, 10 p.m., from west to east, the sky has been trying to clear. We had a decent sunset in our western viewing area with the sky clearing at the last minute. We'll uh, see the sky continue to try to clear over the next handful of hours. All the action really is out west this evening. This uh, Mondo storm eventually is going to come all the way east and cause big-time snows and big-time rains for some. And right now it's producing big-time rains and big-time snows in California. No doubt you've probably seen some of the pictures and video from the mountainous areas outside of Los Angeles. Snow-covered mountains and flooding problems in the Central Valley of California. It's been a very wet go of it in San Francisco and even as far south as Los Angeles. In eastern Ohio and western PA, we've got a real winter coming up on Wednesday, the first day of March. Starting out seasonably chilly with temperatures near freezing, but by midday, you'll notice the change. We're starting to warm up very quickly by midday as the sun comes out in the wake of a warm front. There might be a sprinkle around mid-morning with that warm front, but by midday, we're pushing 60. These numbers are probably even a little bit conservative. At 3 p.m., I could see where we do 64, 65 in a lot of the area. The record high tomorrow is 68. Probably not going to tie or break that, but we'll give it a run for its money. Also, in March, of course, we're into the time of the year that we're gaining daylight at the fastest rate, reaching its peak uh, daily increase right around the... Uh, Equinox coming up in a few weeks. On March 1st, 11 hours, 16 minutes worth of daylight. On April 1st, 12 hours, 41 minutes worth of daylight. So we gain an hour and 25 minutes of daylight in the month of March. And of course, uh, the return of daylight saving time is coming up on uh, a Sunday morning coming up in a, a couple of weeks. And our sunsets will all of a sudden be at 7.30 p.m. The sunrises, of course, get an hour later. Temporarily, we're getting daylight so rapidly, though, in March into April that those sunrises really back get back into the early 7 o'clock hour and even to the 6 o'clock hour pretty rapidly in the springtime. So again, maybe a sprinkle with our front tomorrow morning, sunshine and a breeze tomorrow afternoon, and then an uneventful Thursday is on the way. All right, our Friday system, no doubt if you've been paying attention to forecasts over the last few days, we've been tracking this carefully. It really seemed like the writing was on the wall by yesterday that this was not going to be a big snow producer for us. Uh, that's going to be well off to our north and west. But what this will bring us is quite a bit of rain, we think, Friday into parts of Friday night. Now, initially, as this pushes in, we might see a brief period where there might be some sleet pellets. We might have rain falling into air that's around 32, technically freezing rain, but that would be very brief, probably non-impactful. This is just going to turn into plain old rain for the majority of the day Friday with a gusty breeze. And some of the rain could be 
locally heavy, maybe even a late day thunderstorm. Early look at some of our uh, models here. Uh, the late afternoon runs of the GFS backed off some closer to the European. Earlier, the GFS was suggesting two inches might be realistic. The late afternoon runs have backed off closer to an inch, but I think an inch to two inches at the top of the range is going to be a distinct possibility, depending on how exactly things work out. Uh, so a real soaker on Friday, and you know we've had a couple of decent rain events of late. A couple, not a lot, but uh, the ground is getting wetter. Uh, we've had some flood warnings issued for Eagle Creek around Southington and Braceville in southwestern Trumbull County. The usual suspects that the water tends to run high when we have too much rain, and I suspect we'll see kind of the same thing Friday into Friday night. The absolute heaviest of the rain may be centralized closer to I-71. Uh, some places out there might pick up close to three inches. For us, though, you know, I think an inch or two is our first stab at this. Um, and we'll be able to refine that range, it looks like, as we go into tomorrow and get some, some high resolution model data. But it's not a lot of snow locally, maybe a flake, but more than likely sleep pellets or freezing rain briefly Friday morning. The snow is a non-story uh, for us locally. But anyone who has family and friends in Milwaukee, Green Bay, uh, Grand Rapids maybe, heading up towards the Thumb in, in northern Michigan, and then across the border into Toronto, uh, maybe just north of Niagara Falls, and heading over towards Watertown, New York, and especially into interior New England. That's where the sweet spot will be as far as snow. All right, of course, tomorrow begins meteorological spring, the months of March, April, and May. Uh, this is, of course, the time of the year that our averages are rising really quickly, and these are the average highs on March the 1st. 41 is average by the final day of May. Uh, we're up to 75 for an average high. Today, the uh, Climate Prediction Center uh, issued their updated and finalized March outlook. I suspect this is a little conservative. Uh, I agree generally with where they have the kind of warm areas and cold areas drawn, but I would bleed the deeper blues a little farther east. I'm pretty confident that the middle of the month is going to be pretty cold compared to the average. Now, of course, in March... A cold day is not the same as in late January. Uh, our averages by mid-March, you know, average highs are getting up into the middle and upper 40s. And so a 42-degree day is pretty chilly by that time of the year. So are we expecting some sort of repeat of Christmas? No, I, I don't see anything to suggest that. But a pretty consistently colder than average pattern by some magnitude, maybe it's a few degrees, maybe it's a handful of degrees, uh, does seem pretty likely, I think, as we head towards mid-month. And that should tilt the odds in favor of it being colder than average by some order of magnitude in March. And if that came to fruition, it would be our first colder than average month since October. And if it's more than a degree colder than the average, it would be our first, you know, kind of sort of significantly colder than average month since last April. October was, I think, minus 0.8, uh, not quite a degree colder than average. Last April was over a degree colder than the average. So we'll see how it pans out. Of course, we'll keep you updated on the longer range. In future editions of this video, again, look for a blog post and a special edition of Weather for Weather Geeks coming up on Wednesday. In the meantime, thanks for watching tonight and have a great rest of your Tuesday night.